to the July 22nd, 2024 Rochester Select Board meeting, and we have posted this agenda in three public places, correct, and on the website, and emailed interested parties. So, um, I can't see any of you. <laughs> I can't see you oh, either. Sorry. <laughs> um, That's just the video thing. You don't have to do it whatever you want to do. Oh, when I put the cursor over there, it doesn't really do it. You have to click. Oh, not that one. Here we go. That was much easier. Oh, now it's looking at me. Is that better, Martha? Yes, now I can see all of your beautiful faces. Sorry. Okay. Okay, great, great. So the um, first item on the agenda is the minutes from the July 8th meeting, which I was not at, so I'll let um, you guys decide whether you approve of those minutes or not. I have read over the minutes, and I move that we accept the minutes. I second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Yeah. And we have um, a few. Is um, Beth Kennett on? So I'm actually here, Robo's taking her place. Okay, all right, that's fine. She found out I was coming anyway, and so she said, oh, great. Okay, so... And I, and I am here. Oh, oh you are here. God. Oh, okay. okay, okay. Never mind, then. I should like it. Tag team, yeah. All right, so um, would the two of you um, explain exactly what's going on with the Onyx Off-Road Dirt Bike Trail Network sign request? very much for uh, allowing us to attend the, the meeting. The issue yeah. is that we uh, would like very much to have some kind of sign uh, asking people to slow down on our road. And I don't know exactly what the protocol is. So I came to the town office and said, how do we go about ask requesting a slow down sign? And in part, the issue of People going past the farm very rapidly has been aggravated the last two summers by this uh, motorbike trail that we are on. And I had a gentleman from the ONX trail stay with me last summer and explain why we were having so many motorbikes come past the farm. So this trail is very similar to the vast snowmobile trail system. It's a system of off-road trails that go not just through Vermont. This guy was coming from New York State. Uh, it's a very complex trail system that they have for motorized bikes. And the people have luggage, they have fuel cans, and they're going essentially cross-country. But my, our, as a family, our issue is that the bikers are anywhere from two to a dozen or more coming past the farm in a group. Uh, and they come down off the mountain and see that straight stretch and literally hit the gas pedal. Uh, it's uh, David has been taken by surprise several times when all of a sudden there's all these bikes going by very, very rapidly. So the sign is not just for the ONX motorbikes, but it's for, you know, anybody driving Liberty Hill Road. But it's become rather egregious with the numbers of motorbikes that go past on a very regular basis. So mm -hmm. on our end, on Liberty Hill, uh, on the Rochester side of Liberty Hill Road, mm -hmm. there's no speed limit or there's no signage anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, so the ONX thing exacerbated the situation, but you know, Airbnb, we have, there are quite a few Airbnbs up there and there is no signage coming down the hill that they're even entering a farm area. Yeah. Um, and the road goes right through the farmyard. So, you know, Beth and I have about 2000 people come through the farm every year. Um, so with that and animals and everything, it's there have been quite a few dangerous situations where these people are, I don't know, do you know the topography right there? Yeah. And just yeah. So people come barreling down the road and have to slam on their brakes because they there's no warning ahead of time that mm -hmm. they're, you know it's a more populated area because yeah. they've just come over a class four road. Yeah. So I don't know, it's become a pretty big safety issue. 
So you're looking for a permanent sign yeah. rather than a temporary sign? Yeah. 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 Yes. I would think that in addition to a speed limit sign also, uh, um, just like coming into the village off of Bethel Mountain Road, we say, you know, populated area, you know, you know, you know, it's, and the farm has actually got stuff on both sides of the road there. So um, I think some, I, I don't see any can, problem with I can talk to John that. about putting the speed limit sign yeah, up somewhere. Yeah, I think there. in addition yeah, to that, I do it um, densely, um, you know, you're, um, Yep. Farm, farm animals ahead, you know. Um, yeah, that's a standard yeah. uh, speed limit there yeah. Yeah. for their road anyway, so, which is 35. Sign, you know, I think a, a putting a, posting a specific speed is not going to really accomplish what we want, but mm -hmm. making a, you, you know, slow you down, you know, tractor car, children mm -hmm. at work. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you, you, we couldn't post it for any more than what the road is posted for anyway without doing a traffic study to lower it down. That's why I don't down. want a speed limit sign. I don't want something saying 25 miles an hour because you have to go through all the regulations and traffic studies. What I just want anyway. is yeah. a sign that would slow people down, let them know. Yeah, them you know. should um, cruise down the um, town line road and check out Bill Carlson's place. <laughs> he's gone through great efforts to, um, to he's got a school bus he sign up there. Up. He's got um, that was flashing. Yeah, yeah. But, um, what did Peter Rogal get put on? The state, they put tractor signs tractor up there. Signs. Tractor signs. Yeah. But that was yeah. through the state because it's state, state road. But yeah. we could do it too. We could do that too, yeah. We could. Yeah. I'll, I'll talk to yeah, John about no, it and we'll see uh, what's in the budget. For totally science. reasonable. Yeah. So, yeah. It costs about, I think, I think you would remember it was like 11, around $1,000 a sign, really? I think, to put them in. Mm -hmm. I think by the time he gets the sign and, and does the work and, and does what he needs to do, I think he uses a figure of around 1,100 a sign, I believe. I'm, but you need it I'm, on both sides. Yes, you'd have yeah. to do it for both. But I'll talk to him and see what he can come up with. We'll see figure something out. out. All right. Thank you. Yeah, yep. you're welcome. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks for coming in, both of you. Yep. Um, we all learn something. <laughs> so the um, Appointment for the Valley Rescue Representative. Um, Rob Gardner had been working in that position for a while, and it was very, very helpful. And he's stepped back from that. Do we have any, um, any um, suggestions, recommendations? I suggest Kristen Lapel. Oh, Wait, I thought somebody on, wanted it. I she's, thought she's on she's, the White River. She's already at Werva. Yes, that would so be fine. Was but I think, that, uh, I think one that, representative for both would be. I received an email from Rob and said that Kevin. No, he turned it I down. I heard that Kevin turned it down. He turned it down. Yeah, I I think okay. we should uh, put it on the website to look for someone. Okay. Unless Frank, Kristen Frank, really I'll, wants I'll, it. I'll do it. Unless Who Kristen else? wants the job. Yeah. Yeah. Pat yeah. approached me and I've been thinking about it. Do you want it, Kristen? If you want it, it's yours, Kim. I mean, you're on the Werva board, but I, you know whether you want to be involved yeah. more than you are. You know, Werva suggested it would be streamlined to have one person for both. Okay, yeah. I didn't know. And you are pretty involved with that whole scene. So I seem to be. You do, yeah. yeah. So that makes sense. <laughs> That's yeah. good. Yeah. Sure. Well, I I move to appoint Kristen to that. I second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank, thank you. And thank Actually, Larry, too. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Yes, yeah. thank you, Larry. I think I back here. Thank Next you. Next time. <laughs> we'll keep you in mind. Yeah. Oh, okay. Something else comes up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and I think that we're ready to um, formally set the date for the town-wide vote on the acquisition of the Farmer High School building to be November 5th in conjunction with um, the larger elections at hand. The, the only thing I have to say with this is, um, do we do we have any dates for the other two meetings? 
Yeah. Oh, the important information meetings? No. Yeah. Um, do, we, do we know what those are? I mean, we, we should, do not. We, we should probably them. try to get those out as soon as we can. I would people target know. September and October. Or, or August and, and, and October. September. Or I think we want to have one pretty to close to close the vote. To vote. Right. You know, so October would be the one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not after. Yeah. So, be a Monday night. so September, Monday August, Monday. and October. So we're looking at two. So we, we should nail that down at some point, I would think. Would you roll it into a select so board meeting like you did the last time, or are you looking for like a special? I think we should I'd make it a I special. I think it probably would be good to, you know. Perhaps one here and one back at the high school, the mm -hmm. last one at the high school. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it makes sense to have a, a, a separate a, a meeting. Separate meeting, because yeah. it's uh, you know it's the interest I would assume is going to ramp up as it gets closer. Oh, it's the attendance yeah. to meetings. Um, I feel like we have more here than we did. Excuse me, Dan. Can I ask you a question, please? Yeah, Martha. Um, date would be November fifth, but I'm I'm wondering, is the voting going to be? At a meeting, is it going to be Australian ballot? What kind of voting? There's, a, that, that is, there's, there's a, lot a lot of voting, voting happening on November 5th. That's we're voting the, for president that day. Yeah, we're, we're voting, voting for president, president that day. So, so we're going to fold it into to to that. So it'll be an uh, Australian ballot along with, with that. OK, that's what I thought, but I want Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so um, we'll, we'll want to make sure that that's advertised enough to know that there's absentee ballots yes. available yes. for that, too. As soon as I, um, you know. I know that the high school is definitely working on making sure that's advertised. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. and but, I, I mean, we have to do that, too. Yeah, for the town voting. As for soon the as town. we have the election ballots ready to go, Australian ballot, I can have a, word, a, like a, a ballot for that vote ready to go. Mm -hmm. so we, we, have to, public. Yeah. we have to yeah. approve yeah. that. Right. Right. Do we have to approve that? We do. Yeah. Well, as a as a board to approve what the ballot says or the warning for that? Well, yes, and your your attorney also. Right? Yes. Right. right. Mm -hmm. so, so at least we have that date. That's good. Do you guys want to set a meeting date or? I don't know why we couldn't set the last date. Yeah, I think we'll come up with the date. Bring it up at the next meeting right on the agenda. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I think we'll, so at this point, we'll, we'll set the, the vote for November 5th with the understanding that we're going to set the dates for at least two more informational meetings um, in the next couple months. So um, I'd move to set the date of the vote for November 5th. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's been a long time coming, that. Yeah, let's not move it this time. No. <laughs> no, I know. Okay. <clears throat> Jeez. Um, we have a park use application for the White River Valley Players Annual Harvest Fair on Saturday, September 7th from 10 to 4. Um, that's me. I'm the fair producer. Yes. Um, so um, this is our 35th annual harvest fair for the White River Valley Players. 35th. I've worked on every wow. one of <laughs> It's been a long time. Anyway, um, it's as you know, the harvest fair is... Um, there's live music and there's food and there's all kinds of uh, booths and, and, and stuff. And um, we hope that um, it, you know, it's become kind of an annual event that people look forward to. And we hope that uh, the player, the uh, players will get approval to have it on the park again. Well, I'd move to approve. I'll no second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Thanks, Martha, for 35 years. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> well, I haven't I have not been in charge of it for 35 years, only for about 25. <laughs> okay. Same thing. <laughs> and we have a um, another park use application for the Rochester's Farmers Market Touch a Truck event. I'm really curious. Can you tell me more about the touch a truck event so it's an uh, it's an event that i actually have copied it's kind of popular for ptos to use as a fundraiser mm -hmm. what they do is they get 
um, the local fire department to bring a truck, maybe they'll have an ambulance, um, a school bus, a tractor, and they rope off an area um, and have kids, um, it's by donation usually, it's usually used as a fundraiser, and kids and their parents can come in, or not necessarily kids, because some, some adults got excited when they found out they could touch a fire truck, um, but, and they just come and explore the trucks. Um, so I have had the Rochester Fire Department graciously agree to be there. The Granville Ambulance, um, Harv Downs is donating his time to bring the school bus. Um, I know a farm that might be willing to bring a tractor. Um, and I still need to talk to someone about um, the town truck. But yeah, so it's hopefully it would be a really, really fun event. Um, I think that it's been in other communities where they do it, it's massively popular. So um, what the different, what the reason I'm adding kind of this is because um, the fire department and a couple other people have said that in order to do it safely, what we would need to do is potentially block off a section of the road between the park house and the park, just kind of that middle section. So not all the way up to Amy Bronze, but just kind of yeah. right there. I was just going to yeah, don't block the port <laughs> Yeah, don't say the that the, um, do we wouldn't want to put those trucks on the park. So no. That, yeah. So but. in order, so we'd have that, and obviously I would talk to the park house and mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. make sure that it was okay. Um, but just blocking up and you know making sure that the park house still has that back entrance open. Yeah. And all the driveways still can get out. Um, but in that way. Um, you know, blocking it off to make sure that the kids can walk around and yeah. explore everything without going yeah. into the road. So the town grader probably would be a little bit big for the space. <laughs> That'd be, It'd be cool fun, though. Yeah. 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 I think that's right. My husband <laughs> broached the subject at the Skip Mart meetings this morning, but um, <laughs> Skip Mart meetings. Yeah, <laughs> but um, yeah. Well, that sounds, sounds fun. I oh, yeah. I'd see if I move yeah. to approve that application. And that is for um, on August 2nd. Yes. Coming right up. It would be right, it would be during the farmer's market. Yeah. Um, just a shorter window. Yeah. 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 You'll get some publicity out there, too. I know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Coming right up. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you. Oh, sorry, yeah, the fundraiser's for the farmer's market. Yeah, yeah sorry. it says, that, no, it says on there, yeah, cool. All righty. Um, and then we move to, um, on the agenda, we have the appointment of the zoning administrator, um, handing that off. I've been doing that temporarily for <laughs> a long time. <laughs> temporarily. <laughs> and um, Pat is, is offered to um, fill in that, that position. I and she's sat in on several of the planning meetings. And, and I read the book. And you read the book. Mm -hmm. yeah. I never read the book. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I figured it out. So I'd, um, I would... Um, Move to to make that appointment with Pat as the zoning administrator moving forward. I second that. All well, in favor? All right. right. All right. Thank you, Pat. Thank you. Yeah. I think you'll find it very interesting. <laughs> it is interesting. I yeah. so far. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I know, um, Larry, you were here. You had something that you wanted to talk about emergency oh. management wise. Thank you. I, I apologize for not being on the agenda. So That's all right. Thanks for making time for me. Yeah. Okay. So um, uh, for the audience out there, I'm, I'm the emergency management director. Mm. Um, so um, I'm, a, I'm actually like a private in a long chain of command. Mm. So um, uh, two rivers, uh, Adequichi, who uh, is kind of between us and Vermont Emergency Management, BEM, has contacted me and asked that we get our paperwork in order with regards to the, um, the VT211 alert system, okay? So uh, it's, it's pretty straightforward, and, and there's a couple of different paths, and if you don't mind, I'll just read this? Yeah. All right, thank you very much. This is the process for Vermont Emergency Management to set up VT Alert as a municipality-based notification system, okay? Uh, so there's one op first option. 
VEM will come down here. Uh, they'll do an introductory meeting with the municipality. It takes 20 to 60 minutes to discuss the system overview and a local implement implementation plan. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the that's one way to get mm -hmm. us started, and then we'll take it from there. Okay, two. Um, if you look at uh, plans at page two, uh, municipality official uh, officially adopts the use to use the BT alert notification system. So uh, point one, the, govern the governing body, y'all, must provide a formal document authorizing local use of the VT alert system, e.g. a letter or memo signed by the chair of the select board. Two, one person must be designated as the primary local admin, kind of the, would be a select board member, uh, and they work with VEM to make, okay, uh, authorized to work with VEM to make changes on behalf of the mun municipality and appoint approved managers. Now I'm assuming I would be a quote unquote manager. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, we should have a, a second one at least. So there are also some people in the value of taking the course on their own to the VT alert course. Um, there are no specific limits on the number of managers, um, but they have, there should be at least two. Yeah. Right? And then uh, the managers go off for training. It takes about an hour and a half. And you bring your laptop and, or do it at home with a computer and internet now, I guess. Uh, municipality conducts an optional public awareness plan. So uh, just by adopting this, we're also conducting a public awareness plan, obviously. So um, the municipality may want to inform residents of the statewide and local pro of, of this statewide and local program to encourage people to provide their contact information and sign up for specific locations. So basically, if um, you take care of someone who's housebound, you may already be in this system. Um, if there's another um, horrific event, another Irene or some disaster, um, and it looks like it's going to affect you where you are, the state will actually, someone will actually call you and make sure you're okay, which is pretty cool. And it's, it's um, rather than us going door, door, door to door, this is kind of a more efficient way to be able to contact the most vulnerable people may need uh, to be evacuated. It's a really good idea to have them in the, the, in the system. If the cell towers are working. It's still working. They've got generators. At least for four hours. Right? <laughs> um, so uh, five, lastly, the municipality and VEM maintain the VT alert system in training. So VEM is responsible for the maintenance of the VT alert system, uh, hardware, software, blah, 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 blah. Municipalities are responsible for maintaining any desired notification groups, in other words, to keep the update. That's our responsibility municipality-wise. Uh, and uh, appointing and training local managers as required and notifying VEM when someone no longer is going to have access uh, as a manager when someone steps down. So it, it gives a control of who can trigger one of these VT alerts, who has, to, who has access to this information. Uh, we don't, we don't want to just wild so, and open. So it's in, in a nutshell, if this is, so we've been required to have a, a local emergency management plan um, for a while now, and it seems like this is the way that the state wants to know what's in our local emergency management plan or who's connected well, to it. That's is subtle. That, I haven't made that. I didn't make I'm that. Just, I'm, just, I'm just wondering how this is well, different, this how this adds to what we're already doing. The 2 one system. Yeah, for the 2 one one system. Oh, right. So, I mean, that's the, what the 2 one one system is. We is. already get that, don't we, on yeah. our phones? Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's growing. Is the yeah. training a one-time training or an annual training? I believe it's a one-time training. Okay. And I, I think for number five, what I, what I sense would be useful to whomever starts this list is to join up with the shelter team because I believe yeah. they have a list of people that are homebound. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and so that would be a, a great base to start with. Bam, you'd have yeah. names. Yeah, we've been talking about notification groups. That's one right off the bat. We have a notification group. Yeah. Well, perhaps somebody, um, one of the managers of the shelter team, would be interested in being, yeah, uh, being one of the managers. Being one of the managers, yeah. They're already, they're already managing the group, as you said. Yes. That's really what they're doing. Yeah. Good idea, right? Well, so we. Um, 
since we didn't have it on the agenda, I'm not sure if we can formally adopt it. No, I think it. time would allow us to put it on the next agenda exactly. and then we'll yeah. formally yeah. adopt it. So I, I, we, that'll work us, I give us time to, um, you know, touch base and I know, I'm assuming that you'd be willing to be a manager and then yes, we could sir. touch base with someone on the shelter team. And If anyone has any questions, they can bring it forward now or think about it and yeah. come to our next meeting as well. Yeah. So who so, uh, would reach out to say uh, Leslie or... Other members of uh, Jan McCann. Jan McCann. Jan McCann is Jan McCann is usually a point person okay. for the show. Yeah. So I'll pop her off in email. Yeah. Sure. Great. All right. So, yeah, let's uh, make a note to put that on the agenda for the next meeting and go from yeah. there. Go from there. Cool. Thank you. Thank you all. Yeah. All right. Um, Got anybody here from the library or on Zoom? I don't think so. I have someone named Randall Cochran. I don't think that's the library. No. Hi, I'm Landall. Okay. I'm not from the library. I'm just here for public comment this evening. Okay, okay. perfect. All right. Thank you. All right. Um, so, so we'll get to that in a, in a little bit pretty, pretty soon here, it looks like. Um, I do have something to say about the library. I can yeah. say it here, I guess. Yeah. Um, I have talked to Bread Loaf Construction. They're going to come over and take a, a board off the side there in the north end of that building and try to get a handle on what the condition of the building is underneath and maybe get some idea of the cost associated with repairing that. And we'll get an idea of what we can afford to do there and how when it can be done. Mm -hmm. So they'll they'll come over and give us a day for uh, a cost not to exceed twenty five hundred dollars. So we've got to start somewhere on that building, and I think the best thing to do is figure out what we've got underneath there mm -hmm. to see if we can't get some kind of repair to work there and see what's recommended. Jeff volunteered to be involved with it too and and uh, i'll also be a part of it so we'll know okay. and, and they're going to send the paperwork to us and and we'll get that done this summer so we can figure out good some some avenue for that and on another note i'd like to also try to get some time to remove the siren that we've got out here on the old firehouse and I'm looking at you, Pat, for uh, use of the, the lift, and I'd like to get some firemen to maybe volunteer to take that thing down so we can get rid of that pole and that antenna that's probably a detriment in the end and try to see if we can't get that siren to work again so it can be used in an emergency if there's no cell service or anything else, at least it'll work as a warning through the valley because... I don't know how many people have ever heard that thing, but you could hear it in Hancock and yeah. Granville, and uh, it, it makes a pretty big noise. Uh, but it would be good to have it as a backup for emergency if, if that's the case. And are you thinking of like putting it down at the new firehouse? Or we'd, we'd have to figure out some kind of place for it yep. where it wouldn't be too obnoxious for everybody. but. You know, when you did touch it off, but it is something that we should. Can we do monthly testing? Yeah, you can if you want. I was thinking say about five in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> five yeah, in the morning. Yeah, I used to work. tell you what it was lunchtime. You used to tell me we could go for but, everybody. But I would, I would like to get that. Yeah, if we sure could get some get firemen it. and maybe get the lift from Pat to get up yeah. there and yeah, just yeah, hang out. Yeah, we could sit sure around. I think it's a good idea to get it down before it falls. Down yeah, that's my theory, theory on that too. Yep. yep. And I, I, know, I know there's no power to it, so we can oh. we can take take that. Okay. Um, and Terry's not here to talk about the utilities. Jeff, have you got any um anything that you? I saw you did a um. Um, some suggested wording around the, the mowing bids yes. to encourage uh, use of electro electric. Yes, I did. Um, the I put, put together three options here. Um, there could be more, you know, wordsmithing can go on further. Um, a is the original proposed last meeting. B and C are alternatives. 
So I was going to sit down with Julie and we'll finalize it and, and get it out so we can get the bids out there. On the yeah, we'll get it out next month and then we can get it by the September. So we got it for budget and finance. Yeah, I think that the more simplified, it's kind of clear to the point. Like B, it says, for mowing and trimming bids, the town of Rochester does not require but prefers bids that utilize commercial grade battery electric mowers. Additionally, bids, bids using battery electric trimming tools are encouraged. And then it lists some of the incentives that are out there for that kind of equipment. And option C was, for mowing and trimming, bidders may submit bids that show the cost of mowing using internal combustion engines and or for using battery electric mowers. Bids may also show the cost using internal combustion engines and or battery electric trimming tools. Um, it's interesting if it's going to be a different cost for the, but well, that, that might get... That low. doesn't deter someone with gas from making a bid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, that's what we don't need to discourage. So we, we do want to get yeah. it we, we just need somebody to move. Yeah, I think asking yeah. them to give separate bids for separate equipment would be a little complicated. But yeah. Yeah, um, that saying that it prefers but does not require a bid, that, that, that makes the point that we're trying to make. Yeah. Yeah. But we can work on that. Thank you, <coughs> Jeff. <coughs> Um, what else would you do we have for us? Uh, we'd like to just uh, confirm um, that we should be, we're going to measure 15 windows here for the uh, window dressers, uh, interior storm inserts. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, 15 windows are in the uh, meeting room, the office, and then there are four awnings around the building. Um, the cost estimated, it's uh, not final until we actually measure it. Um, cost estimated is $972.48. There's no tax because this is a tax exempt municipality. And the window dresser's estimate uh, on dollars saved per year is $831.79 based on a $3.40 um, oil cost. Oil cost, yeah. So, um, with uh, just the confirmation, we're ready to, uh, uh, Mike Tietzel and I will do the measuring and, and mm -hmm. uh, get you the final uh, number on the, on the cost. Uh, that these would also be painted white to match the rest of the building. Yeah. Can you uh, say onions? Is that the little one? Mm -hmm. oh. The, uh, you know, we could, uh, I noticed that the town office hours have changed. Um, we could potentially work on the closed Friday if we were allowed admission um, and uh, get this thing rolling. Yeah. Works for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. It's on. It's coming out of the building budget, building facilities yeah, 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 we'll, we'll budget. We'll find reserve. Yeah. If it's going to save us that much money, we'll just put in the oil budget. It's going to yeah. get it back. <laughs> I can let you in sometime too, Jeff. I'm okay. As long as it's after I can do that. Okay. Uh, one thing in the highway, uh, John did get some bids for the pickup. I haven't talked to him. He just handed them in today, so. I'll be in touch with him on that. He's got a selection here, and, but I don't know exactly what he's looking at. So, All right. you know, he has got an idea of what he wants. So, can be continued? Yep. yep. So just and this is replacing up. the 550? Yeah. No, this is replacing the pickup. <laughs> that was the one that we decided to go with yeah. first, and then the 550 was would be okay. following Okay, pickup first. Okay. Yep, the pickup was the one he wanted to replace first, and that was what we budgeted for. Start last. small and work your way up. Yep. <laughs> and then we'll we'll get do the 550 coming up, and then the, mm -hmm. the tandem will be the other one. 
The uh, other thing that I was going to request from the board, um, I noticed the, the new website, and the uh, on that website there's a space for community organizations. And I would request that we allow the uh, Rochester Area Climate Initiative and its three uh, groups to have a listing on that uh, list of uh, community organizations. So that the three components of the Rochester Area Climate Initiative are the Valley Energy and Climate Action Committee, um, the Housing Committee, and the uh, uh, Food and Farm, Farm and Food Hub. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's a good idea. <clears throat> It'd be helpful to the three organizations to, yeah. to have that visibility and, and people can find us more readily. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, we can set that up with Do you want them to provide you with like, contact information for each one? Or yeah. um, do you want to reach out, Jeff, and um, we could put together something that we could reach out to like, Norm Christians who usually does like the website. Okay. Um, but if it's something simple that I could do, I could also or have him set it up and then we could add things as needed. Mm -hmm. I could, I'd be happy to provide some verbiage, um, keeping everything short and sweet okay. and in the yeah. form like it is. And then uh, any contact information. I'm sorry? Any contact information yep. for each yep. one if you yep. want. <clears throat> yeah, I'll, I'll contact uh, all the others to make sure that they're okay with, the con with their contact information right. going out. Yeah. Larry, you had a question about that? Um, no, about the previous. Um, this is for Frank. Frank, the um, vehicle that's being replaced, is that a vehicle used in plowing or only for transportation? It, it's a pickup. It does have a plow on it. It does have a plow. For, for they use it around the village usually and sure. on the cement roads and the driveways. Thank you. Intersections. That kind of stuff. So I'll, I'll uh, get some information to you then, Julie, and mm -hmm. we'll go from there. Perfect. Great. Thank you. Didn't have any um, old business on there, so we um, come to public comment. And who is in there that had something to contribute? Linda. Welcome. You're on. Are you there? There he comes. Let's there you go. Thank you. <clears throat> Apologies. Not always so quick at the keyboard. Uh, my name is Landel. I'm from the town of Huntington, where I've been serving on the select board since 2018. And I'm a candidate for our Senate district uh, this year, Addison Senate District. Uh, in case you folks don't know, there are two towns in the Addison district that are not in Addison County, and that's Huntington and Rochester. So uh, I have been serving my community on the select board for the last few years, and I thought the best way I can continue to help here is to try to deal with the affordability issue in Montpelier. So uh, I'm currently uh, on the Republican ballot on the August 13th primary. If you uh, haven't made up your mind of what you're doing uh, as a Rochester resident uh, on August 13th, I'd love if you'd give me a shot here, uh, take a Republican ballot and uh, check me off. Uh, my goal is to work with the legislator, legislature with all the members of the General Assembly to get to a point where we can honor the goals that seems like a lot of us agree on, but in a way that does not forget affordability and raise taxes at the level that we're seeing right here. So that's that's why I'm running. Uh, my website's landlvt.com. If you have any interest in speaking with me, I'd be happy to strike up a conversation. and. Uh, Appreciate the time, and uh, I look forward to seeing right. you folks in person sometime soon. Well, it's very nice to meet you. We don't always get to meet our candidates. No, no. He's a no. long way away from us. <laughs> I didn't make it in person. I made it down to Hancock a couple weeks ago, but uh, I, I will get out there when I can. <laughs> Huntington is a similar town to Rochester. Very similar. All right, well, thank you. Thanks for um, hanging in there and, and uh, joining in our select board meeting to... And hey, come on down and touch a truck. Yeah, touch a truck. <laughs>
<laughs> August second. It probably will happen. August second. All right. I would also Thanks suggest for letting me know. at the yes. farmers market. Se September seventh. September seventh for the harvest fair. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'd love to yeah. make it for those things. So we we just had a lot of flooding up here in Huntington, and yeah. uh, the fire truck kept coming every hour or so. I have a two year old daughter, so she's asking me now, "Where's the fire truck, Dad?" <laughs> <laughs> so I think she'd love a touch a track event. <laughs> there you go. All right. Well, thank you, Linda. Thanks. All right. Has anyone else got uh, public comment? I, just, okay. I wanted to just add something. Yep. Um, don't forget that tomorrow night is the school vote. Oh, yeah. School vote. School vote. <laughs> at the Stockbridge School at 6 p.m. At 6 p.m. 6 p.m. sharp, folks. <laughs> Good. Nancy. Um, I would like to just ask what plans you might be having for handouts relative to the school, the information meetings and the school vote, and providing information on our debt level at this point. Are you planning on having handouts? At the school vote tomorrow night, or no. you mean in the future? No, at future? your information meetings or having it available. I think that's um, mm -hmm. probably I just think that important. people should have a better understanding of what our debt load is at the moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I talked to Julie about that today, so mm -hmm. we're going to put something together because I think it's important. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Anybody else on Zoom? No, nope. very not, happy. We're going to close um, this um, open part of the meeting and move to executive session where we're um, working with the high school repurposing committee on the hammering out details about how that's going to, um, what kind of agreement we'll have, which once that's hammered out, then we can share that would be one of the good handouts to include with that information. Yeah. We have a hand up from Landall again. Ah. Or maybe that was a bye-bye. That was a bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay. laughs> He's gone. All right. So um, thank you all for coming.